Inside the Ties. Every Friday, at least I try to do every Friday. I'm not very good with scheduling. I tend to have a lot of stuff going on, but that doesn't matter. It's Arch Dash USA. This is Chris, and I hope you guys uh, had a fantastic week. Let's get to the stories that I kind of discussed over the week that you may have missed if you didn't go to the website, which you can find out in the description. But let's get to those stories so you don't have to listen to me ramble. The first one is Adidas's NIL network for student athletes and how it offers an opportunity for continuous engagement with an important demographic. So I put the link down here for you to go and read the story. But this is what name, image and likeness is. If you're wondering why a player like Mikey Williams, who um, is signed to Puma, why he can get a contract now, it's because the NCAA has um, become less restrictive in regard to collegiate athletes and their name, image, and likeness. Now, that means we're probably going to start getting uh, NCAA uh, football games again, NCAA uh, basketball video games again, because before, when you had Ed O'Bannon, who was out here fighting for the rights of college athletes, he and um, what's his name that worked for Nike that signed everybody? I can't even think of it. Sonny Vaccaro sat down and they took the case to the Supreme Court and they fought for these rights for, nat- for collegiate athletes to make money. Now, Adidas is the first company, the first brand to create a NIL network for student athletes at their sponsored colleges. It's extremely important and it's a really cool thing for Adidas to do. Nike is not officially on the books with an NIL program, but they do have a company that's called Division Street. Division Street. If you've never heard of it, you can look it up. Division Street operates the NIL for the University of Oregon. So although Nike was kind of the first to set up a college based thing, and it's not Nike, once again, the people that work at Division Street are ex-Nike people. And Phil Knight is involved in Division Street. So it's for the University of Oregon. Once again, This is Adidas, the first brand to create an NIL network for student athletes. That means that girls, boys, them, they, everybody who competes in collegiate athletics will get a chance. Not everybody at an Adidas school, athletes that compete there will get a chance to earn revenue from their name, image and likeness. And it's only right. It's only right. That's all I have to say. All right. So that's the first story. Let's move on to the next story. Next story is of course with Pencil. I always have to announce this because these Pencil masterclasses are free. You have to pay for room and board and your travel, but the classes are free and Pencil just aligned with Wolverine Worldwide. If you don't know who Wolverine Worldwide is, they are the makers of Meryl Cat, Sarkoni Sperry, and Wolverine Boots, as well as Cat. So I don't know why that's not under there. But anyway, they have another master class coming up with Pencil, Lewis College, and Wolverine Worldwide. Very cool thing. If you can, if you're in Detroit, you should definitely do this. I mean, think about it. You're there in Detroit. You can go there easily. It's an amazing opportunity. If you're in that area around Detroit where you can drive in, incredible opportunity. That's all I have to say about that. Let's move on to the next story, which is the main story for this week. And that is how sneaker sales have slowed down on third party sites. Now, I didn't do my report for February. I'm going to combine February and March and work on both. Now that it's April, I don't have any tricks for you. No April Fool's Day. The only April Fool's you need to know is if you're trying to go out there and be a reseller now, don't. (laughs) Because things are slowing down considerably. Now, if you've got a great bot, Have fun. Bot your heart out. No one likes you. Anyway, um, let's keep rolling and see what I'm talking about here. So uh, I saw a video of a dude filling up his gas tank. And 19 gallons is $105 to fill up his gas tank. That's basically an average of $4.14 for gas across the country. I went and spoke at the Athlete's Foot a week ago. And um, I didn't think that the gas prices would affect um, sneaker sales, but they have. But this isn't even, that's just an introductory thing to get into this conversation. What I'm getting at here is what you see on my side, and that is this note from StockX, right? So they've changed a policy, and this is what happened. So StockX, 
um, has adjusted their long term policy for level four and five sellers, which I'm a level five seller. And um, traditionally, high level sellers, you could contact a rep and get times adjusted. But in recent months, the policies have changed a lot. And this screenshot that you see to my side um, gives insight into how StockX has changed. In previous years, when StockX didn't charge for returns, that policy has ended. You now get dinged $15 when you have a shoe that gets returned. Now, this note next to us is saying basically StockX is buffering themselves. They're protecting themselves from future losses. Now, as things begin to slow down, companies are going to have to find different ways to generate revenue. And StockX is one of those companies. They're going to go public soon. And you can't go public showing a considerable loss unless you're uh, Allbirds. <laughs> and Allbirds show considerable loss. It's not the same as On Running, who was performing extremely well when they went public. Going public means that you're going to take your a company to the stock market and make it publicly traded. Just making sure you don't want to assume that you don't know that. But level four and five sellers, people like me, we um, have systems in place. And in some instances, uh, we have to adjust shipping times or we have to move things around. Now, before we could go in and cancel or move things. Now, uh, most people don't have that ability on StockX. You're kind of stuck when you don't ship a product. You're just in trouble. But now StockX is saying, hey, we're adjusting this. You're going to have to ship or you're going to be charged either $15 or 15% of the transaction. That's considerable. And uh, at a time when sales are slowing considerably, I don't know if that's really productive for them to do. But I have a feeling a lot of people didn't even pay attention to this note that came. They didn't even see it. So they're not even thinking about it. So when we move on down into this uh, discussion, and I'm saying that sneaker sales have slowed down on third party sites. I know for me personally, the sales have slowed down considerably and I don't even sell hyped product. I sell basic, regular arbitrage kind of stuff. It slowed down considerably for me. And I talked about it in a previous report. You can go to the website, look in the report section of the site. You just go over here and you see SRR and analysis where this thing is highlighting uh, over to my side down here. There it is. You click on that and you can go back and read all of the reports. It's open. I don't have a subscription anymore. You can read it for free. But here's the important part of it. eBay is also adjusting, right? So we know that eBay, uh, no, they ended their long time kind of no fees on sneakers above uh, $100. While eBay still claims that they have the best fees in the business, it's becoming apparent that the issues facing traditional retailers are now shaping resale. Uh, one of the most blatant adjustments on eBay has been the need to add promoted listings. Now, I don't know if you guys are selling on eBay or not. If you're selling something, even if you're just selling a pair of used tennis shoes, eBay's doing promoted listings and you literally have to do that to gain visibility. And while this is an unwritten requirement uh, when listing on eBay, it increases the fees that eBay claims are the lowest in the business. Uh, there are a lot of discussions taking place around the work eBay is doing. I think the most telling aspect is looking at a year over year comparison of a week on eBay. Now I'm looking at a week. You guys are going to have to remind me to do this. I'm going to come back and look at an entire month to see if I'm correct because I make a prediction at the end of this. I took a moment to utilize a research tool to search the term sneakers on eBay. The result gives a metric showing the decline in every aspect from March 28th to April 3rd, 2021. Compared to March 21st to March 28th, 2022. So I'm looking at a year over year, 2021 to 2022. Hopefully you follow and I'm not talking too fast. The research tool allows um, you to research over the course of a year. So that's the reason we're weak on that. So I can't go back beyond that year. I can only search from the 28th. But here's what you'll find below in this chart um, for the metrics and the decrease. And I have two pictures here for you to see. Now, if you look at 2021, you can't see my mouse moving even though I'm moving it. But over here on the side now, I have it in the middle of the page. And the article is in the description. So you can go and look at that. All right. If you like, ooh, I can't really see that. So here we go. Uh, the average sold price in 2021 was 99.15. 2022, it dropped to 91. That's a 8% decrease. Uh, total sneakers sold, 199,832. 2022, 174,881. That's a 12% decrease. 
Total sellers, 56,000, drop to 51,000. And that's a 9% decrease. Uh, total sales, once again, 19 million, drops to 15 million, 914,000. That's a, almost a 20% decrease. Those are huge numbers. And I'm not sure if you guys gather what I'm saying here. The sales across the board on all 30 third party platforms has decreased. It slowed considerably. So how do these companies make up for that difference? You're losing sellers, you're losing uh, sales. And if you can't see these charts, which I know it's hard to see them, it's hard to see them. So I'm going to open it up so you can see the numbers. And this is the 20, uh, 2022 chart and it shows the sales at 15 million and it shows your $91 average price. Now let's go back a year ago and look at those sales and they were 99 average and 19 million. This is extremely problematic for eBay. So the chart is troublesome for a variety of reasons, but like StockX, eBay limits the amount of research which can be done on the platform. So you can't find all of the information and go back three or four years, which sucks. I wish I would have been tracking it this whole time. But StockX lists, lists these sales for up to a year. So you can see a trend on their site. To truly understand how serious this problem is, I got to start researching everything right now and I'll try to, I'll, you know, you guys can remind me, you can go in the comments or you can send me an email and be like, yo, Chris, go back and do that chart and see where the sales were for all of April. And I'll go back and remember to do that. So I have to do that, but I'm making a prediction right now, April of last year, 2021, April of this year, today is April 1st, right? Uh, end of April. I'll put a reminder for myself to go back and look at the year over year comparison. And I'm predicting that on eBay, the sales will be down 13 to 18%, which is an enormous anytime. And I don't know if you guys understand percentages and I'm sure you do, because if you're watching this station, you're just not some kind of dude that's just coming to look at sneakers. Percentages, man, are very important. And small percentage points in some people's eyes are huge for big businesses. eBay is a big business. For me to say that they would lose 13 to 18% year over year, they're going to have to fix something. Something's broken. But it's the same for StockX. It's the same for all of these different platforms who are trying to, who are basically selling a product that's been sold once. It's resale. All right. So things are going to have to be fixed. Do I want to leave you guys with that kind of ending that's kind of bringing you down? No, I don't want to leave you kind of bringing you down. So let's end on a sneaker note and show you guys some of the shoes that I thought were very cool for you people to check out uh, this week. And I wrote and did articles for these. First shoe that I saw was the Vective. Now, if you didn't know, North Face has a trail shoe. The trail shoe is dope. I love the look of it. And this is the Vective Future Light, Escape One Future Light. I think these are dope. And yeah, you're probably not going to wear them casually, but if you do trail running, this is going to be something that you should really look into. All right, so that's the Vector from North Face. Yes, North Face makes a running shoe. They make very cool looking running shoes. Uh, the second shoe was the Carhu, even though I like that clay, the Carhu uh, mascot pack. And the mascot pack, you can see these pictures, man. These shoes are dope. Period. What am I wearing today? I'm going to lift my feet up here. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm on a bandwagon. But I've had these for at least 10 years, man. So it's not the same. The uh, Carhu <laughs> mascot pack is dope. You guys should check those out. Uh, I'm not going to leave links to those. They're not paying me. These are shoes that I just think are cool to end the video on. And the final pack is the Salcone collector's pack of the shadow 6000 and the jazz 81 super clean super clean pack and you can get both shoes at one time making it kind of like a defining moments pack but check out the materials on these things man those are gorgeous that's a pretty shoe that's a good way to end it with that pack from Salcone. hopefully you guys appreciate inside the ties i'm really going to try to be a lot more active and make sure I get these done uh, because I think it helps. Um, see you guys on the next one. Peace.